Ah, hello there. Nice to see you and welcome to today's live lesson. <clears throat> Today, we have a very interesting class. We're going to be looking at the topic of waiting and patience, being patient. I wonder if you're a patient person. We'll be looking at the language, vocabulary, idioms, some listening, some model answers, all to help you talk confidently on this topic. First of all, let's begin with a little bit of this. Hello, my friends all my friends. Maybe there's more than one of you out there. It's so nice to be back. Um, I'm very sorry that I had to postpone this lesson from the beginning of the month because I was ill. I did have COVID. I did have COVID, but I'm, I'm much better now, I think. Anyway, feels better. So it's great to be back and I'm excited for this lesson today. Um, we're going to be talking, as I mentioned, about this topic, all about patience and waiting. Um, it's going to be interesting, the topic, right? Um, we're going to look at some different aspects of patience, um, waiting. What do we mean by patience? Um, how do you be patient? And what kind of situations do you have to be patient? Or maybe not. Some people are incredibly impatient, but that's fine. We're not worried about that. We're just going to look at the language you need to talk about this topic. So let's see who is in the house. Why wow, there's so many people here. Um, Maftuna, nice to see you. Uh, Lezia says, thank you. She says, patience is exactly what I need to learn. Thank you. Excellent. Good. We've also got um, Celine. Be patient, guys. Yeah, that's why I was a minute late. So I was teaching you patient. <laughs> and we've got Fatima from Bangladesh. Hello, Fatima. Nice to see you. Gul Safa. Um, Corridor TV. Corridor TV from Uzbekistan. Interesting. Nice to see you guys here. Tengiz, um, Ramanko, Hannah, Domenico. Nice to see you here again. Brilliant. Mina Pahandi. Lovely. A lot, a lot of people. And it's great to see you all from all over the world. Uzbekistan, India, Bangladesh, um, Ukraine, Azerbaijan, Afghanistan. Proud merchant Ali from Pakistan all over the world. Lovely to see you. We're going to talk about patience and um, patience and waiting today. So just to begin, um, let's, what am I going to begin with? I'm just going to remind you, right, that um, I do actually have a website. A lot of you are watching on Facebook. Some of you are watching on YouTube. Um, but I do have this website called the Keith Speaking Academy. Um, and if you want resources for IELTS speaking, you can go and check it out over there. Um, you will find well all sorts of stuff. You'll find the free live lessons, which is what you're watching here. You can download the PDF from last time about work. Um, later, you can download the PDF from today. And if you want more information on different topics, it's all here. Work and money, health and fitness. It's all in there. You can find information about the test, about the test format, um, and about the different parts of the test, including the speaking topics, part one, two, and three, um, and tips as well. So go and check it out. It's the Keith Speaking Academy. Lots of interesting stuff for you there. <clears throat> now then, um, today, I am very happy always to get emails from people, um, especially people who've done the test, and succeeded in the test and let me know it was so nice I got one from Yash Yash um, who said I'm thrilled to let you know I got 7.5 band on my speaking test I needed this score badly for immigration purposes I gave the test on the 15th I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart because your videos and lessons helped me achieve this Brilliant. Um, thank you so much from Yash Bodawala. That was lovely to hear. It's so nice to hear, hear these stories, right? There was one from Kalang, Kalang Jobo who said, this is to inform you, I already got my IELTS results as I set the exam on the 29th. 
I'm glad to tell you I got us 8.5 on speaking. You, some people do do it. It's very unusual, but there you go. All thanks to you for your patience and heartfelt love for your students and their success. Please continue doing the good work. Uh, Kalam Jobo, that was so nice. So thank you so much for these um, emails. It's very, very motivating for me as well, right? So um, today, let's have a look what we're going to be doing. Let me go through um, today's topic, talking about waiting and patience. Uh, our, our expert, Mr. Bean, is maybe not a very patient guy. We're going to start today. We're going to start by looking at vocabulary. Um, and then we'll move on and start looking a bit about, well, situations where you have to wait. <laughs> situations where you have to wait. We'll be looking at that um, and then we'll move on to do a listening task. Now, in the listening task, we're going to be focused on a model answer for a part two question and picking out the interesting language for that. Okay. We'll then look at idioms as well for this topic. I wonder if you know the idiom at the end of your tether. At the end of your tether. What can that possibly mean? Interesting. We'll find out. And of course, today we're going to finish up with a game of Kahoot, which is where I make sure you're paying attention. I'll be testing you on some key vocabulary from the lesson. And let's see who can win today's game. So that is what we've got happening today. Waiting and patience. Excellent. Good. Now then, let me switch over here and, well, let's kick off. I'll just see how you're all doing. Nice comments for everybody. Uh, Negin Mirgashini says, you are the most inspiring person in the world. Thank you so much. Um, Kuchin Lujani, good morning, Professor Keith. Very happy to see you again and enjoy your wonderful lessons. Thank you so much. Um, Erdu Grolgazi from Turkey. Um, I learned a lot from you. I debt a huge thank and a huge love and thank you. Great. We've got Shane from the Philippines. Nice to see you here. And we've got Salam alaikum. Sal not salam alaikum. It's salam alaikum. <laughs> All the way from Abadajan. Say it properly. Great. So, listen, let's kick off, right? We're going to begin. I'm going to test you at the very beginning, right? Um, just to warm up this nice winter's day, I want you to fill in the gap with one word, right? You can just write in the chat box, you can write one, the word, number two, the word, number three. There may be more than one correct answer, possibly, right? Okay, so... I was annoyed when somebody blank the queue. Number two, I'm a patient person. I rarely blank out of patience. Number three, at work, I'm always in a blank. <clears throat> I never have time to stop and think. So I'll give you a minute, have a look and write down your answers in the chat. Great. Refat, good luck on the 22nd. Everyone seems to agree on number two. Number one, a bit unusual. Hey, 
Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Um, lots and lots of different ideas there. So let's have a look. I was annoyed when someone, well, a lot of you said break the queue. We wouldn't say break the queue or broke the queue in English. Not really. Um, it's not clear what that means. Um, some of you said stand in the queue. I was annoyed when someone stands the queue. <clears throat> if stand in the queue, trouble stand in is two words. Stand the queue? Mm, no, stand the queue. And actually stand in the queue may mean, right, that the person... Um, that here are the people, bum, 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 and the person is at the end of the queue, which is fine, and you wouldn't be annoyed. Um, so stand in doesn't really work, no. Um, in, I was annoyed when someone in the queue, mm, but you need a verb, right? Um, the answer we got, someone said skipped. I was annoyed when someone skipped the queue. <clears throat> You could say that, possibly. They skipped the queue, which means they ignored the queue and went straight to the front. I would say the best answer here is where somebody jumped. But it must be jumped, right? Quite a few of you said jump, but do notice we said annoyed. So it's in the past. Be really careful with your grammar, right? It must be in the past. I was annoyed when someone jumped the queue. Skipped the queue could be okay as well. Um, anything else? Miss the queue? No, because if you miss the queue, you just don't go there. You ignore it and you don't go to the front of the queue. You ignore it. So that doesn't really work. Okay, jumped and skipped are fine. I think those are really the only two. Number two, I'm a patient person. I rarely run out of patience. That's the expression, right? I rarely run out of patience. Um, somebody said get out of patience. Mm, we don't say that. Doesn't really work. Um, anybody else have anything different? I think, let me just check for number two. B, I rarely be out of patience? No. I rarely am out of patience? No. It has to be run, really. Run is the only one that fits. Um, at work, number three, I'm always in a rush. A lot of you got this one. Excellent to be in a rush. Um, <clears throat> rush. Hurry also. Quite a few of you had hurry and that works as well. To be in a rush, to be in a hurry. So let me just highlight them. Run, rush or hurry. And I think those are the only two that we can really have, right? Any other answers? I'll just check, but I think that's it. Hurry, rush. Any others? No, no, that's it. Perfect. Okay, great. Um, answers at bottom of PDF. Let's go down through the whole lesson. Bo, 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 this is today's lesson. Bo, 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 bo. <laughs> um, I was annoyed where some, when someone jumped the queue. I rarely run out of patience. Present tense. Um, at work, I'm always in a rush or a hurry. Okay, so these are all words and expressions connected to waiting, rushing, being in a hurry and being patient. <coughs> Great. Let's move on then and have a look at patience vocabulary. So I'm going to begin with to wait. Okay, we talk about to wait for someone, to wait for, to wait for the bus, to wait for um, my teacher to arrive, to wait for the traffic to get better. I'm waiting for the bus, okay? <clears throat> now, um, just be careful, right? Sometimes I notice this, this, this used to be, it happened a lot when I was working in different countries. Um, if I was on my way to meet somebody and I don't know if this was a, maybe this was in China a lot, maybe it's a Chinese translation. The people waiting for me would often say, okay, no problem, you're five minutes late, right. that's fine. I'm here waiting for you. And if you say, I'm here waiting for you, it means that you're a bit annoyed, a bit angry, and you're frustrated. 
right? I'm waiting for you. What you're really saying is, come on, hurry up, for goodness sake. I'm waiting for you. So if you're speaking to somebody, maybe on the phone, can I take my phone? Look at that, all these cameras everywhere. You're on the phone and you go, yeah, don't worry, five minutes, that's good. Yeah, take your time. Don't say, yeah, five minutes, that's good. Yeah, I'm waiting for you, you idiot. <laughs> that's what you're saying. I'm waiting for you, come on. No, say, listen, it's fine. Five minutes late, no worries, take your time. That's what you should say. So just be careful with that use of uh, I'm waiting for you, <laughs> right? So I'm waiting for you means um, I'm a bit angry. It might be better to say, no problem, take your time. Right, take your time means don't rush. Take your time, don't rush. Don't rush or don't hurry, right? You could say both of those. There you go. Better to say, no problem, take your time, take your time, don't rush. So on the topic of waiting, we talk about to queue or to stand in line. To queue, I think, is a bit, a bit more British, right? To queue. In England, we like to queue or we like to queue up, actually. So we often say to queue up. Um, I'm queuing up to pay for my food in the shop. Um, stand in line is a bit more American. We tend not to say that in England, to stand in line. I think it's much more an American thing to stand in line, to queue. British love queuing. We queue everywhere. We're always queuing. It's one of our biggest hobbies is to queue. If there's more, but the joke in English is what do you, what do you call um, a group of people where there's more than two people? It's a queue, right? Because wherever you are, we queue to stand in line. Uh, now, sometimes people jump the queue. Do you remember we said to jump the queue? And that's where there's people here. And instead of going at the end, oh, you jump in. So there are people queuing. Somebody comes in and jumps the queue. Often they say, oh, no, I was here before. <laughs> or, or they say, oh, no, 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 my, this is my friend. Oi, I'm queuing. No, but I'm with my friend. Or I was here before. I don't care. Do you know what annoys me is in the supermarket where you've got your trolley and you're queuing and somebody in front of you has the trolley and then they go off and start looking for more things to put in the trolley and then they come back and the trolley's stood there and you're waiting behind the trolley. So annoying, right? But more annoying is people who jump the queue. <laughs> Not very nice. Um, other ways we can say the same thing, to cut in line, more American, um, to cut in front of someone. This is also when you're driving, right? You know, when you're driving or on your bicycle, particularly driving the car and you're driving along and somebody in the lane next to you cuts in front of you, either to get off the motorway or, or to jump the queue and they cut in front of you and you bib your horn, bam, bam, bib your horn because you're so angry. So to cut in front of someone or to jump in front of someone, you can say, or to jump the queue. All of these. It's interesting, right? How many expressions we have to say to jump the queue. <laughs> now, I say you may get angry, possibly, but maybe you don't get angry. It depends if you are patient or not to be patient, right? Um, this is patient as an adjective. Be careful with patient as a noun, which means a sick person, right? A patient in the hospital. But to be patient is to be able to wait calmly. 
be able to wait calmly, to be patient, right? We can also say to have patience, um, which is the same. So I'll put this here as, as to be patient, to have patience, right? Um, if you are not patient, the opposite is I am not patient. Whoops, let me show you. Then we would say I am im, im, ma, 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 ma. Ma, 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 impatient, right? Because you've got the P, it's a bit like impossible, right? Mission impossible. It's im with a P, adjective with a P. The negative is I am, M for mother, M for monkey. I'm not patient. I'm impatient. I'm impatient. So you end up, you can see, you end up linking. I'm impatient. I'm mim, mim, I'm mim, I'm mim. Can you say that? I'm mim, I'm impatient. Nice, I'm impatient, if you're not patient. Um, if you are patient, then you will probably Stick it out. I'll say that. If you are patient and waiting in a line, then you will probably stick it out. So to stick it out is to continue to the end of an unpleasant situation. Um, it, can, it can be many, many different things. So imagine you're in a queue as I said in the, um, do you remember? I said in the supermarket, you've got your trolley, somebody's in front of you, there's a long queue. And if you can continue until the unpleasant situation finishes, you say, listen, I'll stick it out. I'm waiting, I'll stick it out. Maybe you're wait waiting at the bank to use your ATM. And there's so many people and you think, oh, forget it, I'm going home. Oh no, I need the money today. I will stick it out. I will wait, right? I will stick it out. Literally, it means to continue to the end of an unpleasant situation, but often it just means to wait. I will continue to wait, um, to stick it out, stick it out. Again, you can notice how you'll be connecting. As with many, many phrasal verbs, you have the option to connect, stick it out. Just repeat with me, tout, tout, kit out, kit out, stick it out. I'll stick it out. Perfect, nice, brilliant, good. Um, I'm a patient kind of person. You could also say, maybe you are. Listen, let me check in with some of the comments you're coming in with. <laughs> Let's have a look. Yeah, okay. I'm catching up with your comments here. This is, Sohil, this is really good. I've been waiting for you, right? This goes back to what I said about, I'm waiting for you. When you say, I've been waiting for you, it means you're angry. You're not happy. I've been waiting for you. You idiot. Why are you late? Okay. <clears throat> uh, if you're not angry, you just say, oh, it's okay. Don't worry. No problem. You're here now. You're here now. Excellent. What else have we got? Desiree. Thank you, Keith. I got my desired band score. Well done, Desiri. Nice. Congratulations. Let me give you a round of applause. <laughs> Excellent. Good. Lillian says, uh, we love to queue as well. Yeah. Not only the British, right? Lots of people do. Celine says, be queue up and don't get frustrated. Celine, thank you so much for sharing this. I'm just going to help you and everybody um, Q, oh, wait. So you don't need B, right? You just say Q up and don't get frustrated. 
There's no need for a B here, right? Fantastic. Well done. Excellent. <laughs> uh, Salterbrook says, we gave large queue in Kerala to get alcohol sold by the government. Right. Excellent. Well, I'm not sure if that's excellent, but good. We gave large queue. Um, we gave a large queue. Not we gave a large queue. Um, I would rather say we made a large queue. In fact, even large, I would change to long, right? Because when you think about it, queues are either long or short. And to make a queue. So we made a long queue in Karela um, to get the alcohol. Yeah, why not? Why not indeed? Excellent. <clears throat> Domenico says, I, I find it annoying when someone jumps the queue. Lovely, nice, very good, good example. <clears throat> Uh, Alex says, somebody cut in front of me when I was driving the other day. I nearly had an accident. And that's why it's really annoying when people cut in front of you, because it is dangerous when you're driving, right? Especially if they're going fast. OK, excellent. <clears throat> Justino says, if I want to learn English, so I need to stick it out. <laughs> that is a lovely example, Justino. It's not only waiting, but it's continuing I mean, I, it's a lovely example. I realise, <laughs> hopefully, learning English is not unpleasant, but I realise it's tough. And especially exam preparation, right? If you're learning English for IELTS, stick it out. Don't give up. <clears throat> Excellent. OK, brilliant. Let me move on. Let me move on. We've got cut in line, da, da, da. we've been sticking it out. Now, we've talked about being in a rush because the opposite of being patient is also when you are rushing everywhere. So we can say to be in a rush, be in a hurry. Um, and uh, Two more expressions connected. To have a short span of attention, and we often use this nowadays more than ever because so many people are watching TikTok, reels, shorts, that their attention span, how much you can focus, is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Um, some people, right, with TikTok, it's like 15 seconds, boom, and then you have to change. Um, so to have a short span of attention, right, to be, to be able to focus only for a short time. That's really what it means, right? The expression you want to learn is a short span of attention. Span is like uh, the length, how long it is, if you like. The span of attention. Um, when we talk, well, no, I'll leave it at that. A short span of attention. Fast pace of life. Today, nowadays, we are in a hurry because of the fast pace of life. And what happens when all of this happens? It may mean that you lose your patience. And there are different expressions here, as we said earlier, to run out of patience or to lose your patience, right? It's interesting. I don't want to always say to lose. It's like, where, where is my patience? Where has it gone? You've lost your patience. It just means you are no longer patient to run out of patience, to lose your patience. Notice again with your pronunciation, right? When you're practicing, over-exaggerate. It sounds strange, but especially with the stress, when you stress a syllable, make it longer, make it higher pitch, and make it louder, right? So you're saying to lose your patience. To lose your patience. To run out of patience. To run out of patience. Yeah, practice like that and it will become much, much easier to speak normally. <laughs> um, we've also got to get fidgety. Um, so some people, when they are impatient or waiting, they get fidgety. Fidgety is when you cannot sit still.
moving, you're titching, you're on the phone, you're, you're fidgety as you're moving all the time. It's kind of con continually moving. Normally your hands, normally, to get fidgety. Um, when some people lose their patience, they start to get fidgety. So when some people are losing their patience, they start to get, or they just get fidgety. Let's make it simpler, right? They get fidgety. Um, fidgety is kind of the moving of your hands all the time. To pace up and down is when you're walking up and down, up and down. You know, the image of the worried father waiting for his daughter to come home late at night, pacing up and down, up and down, right? So this is kind of walking up and down um, in a nervous way. In a nervous or impatient way. Let's I mean in this case we're talking about impatience, right? In an impatient way. I was pacing up and down, waiting for you to get home. <laughs> I was pacing up and down, walking up and down. Come on, come on, come on, waiting for you to get home. <clears throat> Right, good. Selena says, I used to get fidgety when I was young. Saido uh, Lim says, people of Central Asia are really patient with everything. Good for you. Pleased to hear that. <laughs> Sana, says, I, Sana says, I lose my patience when I talk to rude people. Good example. Very good example. Um, Alex says, children tend to get fidgety at school because they have a shorter span of attention than adults do. Lovely, Alex. Very, very nice. Great. <laughs> Zil says, when I'm hungry, I am become pacing up and down in the kitchen. Right, nice. Zil, let me just help you. Um, instead of saying I'm become, because that I... I I'm become is normally a change of mood or a change of state. I think better here to say I start. When I'm hungry, I start pacing up and down in the kitchen. Lovely, nice. Jessica says, my mother was pacing up and down waiting for my father. Excellent, good. Where was your father? What was he doing? <laughs> Out with his mates. <laughs> right, lovely, good. So that's it. Lots and lots of different vocabulary, interesting phrases, right, you can be using to talk about this topic. Okay, so um, we've talked here about vocabulary. Let me just come back. I'm going to switch camera. Ba -bum. So we've been talking about vocabulary, different phrases you can use. I'm going to move on and look next at situations where you have to wait right situations where you have to wait look you can see my white shirt hey that's because it's cold i've got to wear a thermal vest situations where you have to wait can you tell me right um any situation where you have to wait for example at the doctors right at the doctors there's an example let me just change the uh color tell me a situation where you have to wait just write it down in the um in the comments and i'll share some of your examples okay at the doctors good Good example, in the clinic, good, at hospital, good, 
train station, nice. At the gas station, maybe, yes. Good. Uh, Rohamelia says, that moment when you have to queue for security on the verge of missing your flight, yes. BBB, good. Bank is a bit like clinic. Um, there are some words you need the, it's at the bank, at the doctors, at the clinic, uh, at the airport, great. At the clinic, at the hospital, at the bus stop. At the airport, in the airport, at the airport, in the airport, at the airport is okay. You could say both of those, at or in. <laughs> nice. Very good. Yeah. Eating. Waiting. Exam results are put. Nice. Daniela at the restaurant. Yes, good. Waiting for a seat. Waiting for a seat or a table. Yep. At ATM machines. Excellent. Good. Home affair offices. Sure. Uh, reception at reception. Yep. The school dining room. I'm going to say in, in the school dining room. Unless you're a teacher. Normally the teachers don't have to wait, right? Airport, post office. Okay, lots of situations. Great. Lots of them. Nice. A bit like the jazz. So, at the doctors, at the clinic, at the hospital, at the bus stop, waiting for an exam result, at the restaurant, waiting for a seat in the school dining room. Nice. A few more that I added, maybe the same. Um, queuing in a shop, waiting for an appointment, right? Whether it's the doctors, the dentist, the dentist, um, stuck in traffic, another place, right? You have to wait. Emergency department in a hospital or at the hospital. I guess the department is in the hospital, but you can say at the hospital more generally. What about this one? Waiting for the right partner. Waiting for Mr. Wright or Mrs. Wright. <laughs> Waiting for your wife or husband. I mean, before you marry, right? After you marry, you'll also be waiting a lot for your partner. Trust me, you'll spend many days waiting and waiting. Um, waiting for the result of a job interview or an exam. Somebody earlier said waiting for an exam result. Um, waiting for the result of a job interview. There you go, there's another one. I can take that one off. Waiting for a bus you mentioned. Yeah, waiting for a bus, train, exactly, exactly, all the more. Um, and somebody had waiting for Christmas. So I guess what we, we can put here is waiting for a special, special, ah, God. good. I'm having a nightmare with my keyboard today. Waiting for a special day, all sorts of things, right? Okay. <laughs> Burns, yes. At the restroom, absolutely, yeah. Waiting for the toilet, absolutely. Check-in at the airport is good. All of these are great. Excellent. Good, good answers. Uh, holidays, waiting for a special day, waiting for the Tet holiday in Vietnam. It's coming soon, right? Waiting for my girlfriend. Yep. Waiting for your live class, Mr. Keith. Yep, indeed. Um, I'm waiting for the right partner. Exactly. Yes. 
Excellent. Good. Okay. Now then, all of these different situations where we wait. My next question then is, which is the most difficult situation for waiting? Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you... Da, da, da. Yes. Let me show you this here. The most difficult... I'm going to put this on um, on the website on here. Let me change from this website to this website. Now, here, which is the most difficult situation or the most difficult waiting situation for you? Okay. I'd like you to have a look. We've got queuing in a shop, waiting for an appointment, being stuck in traffic, number three. So actually, all you have to do is put down the number. Just put down the number and we'll see. Uh, number four, waiting in the emergency department. Number five, waiting for the right partner. Number six, waiting for the result of an interview or exam. Number seven, waiting for a bus. Okay, so those are the options. Just put down the number of the most difficult waiting situation for you. Which is the most difficult waiting situation? And if you put the number, you can see your names are appearing in the bottom right. We'll find out what you all think. Here we go. It's a chance for me to get a drink. Somebody says when you have diarrhea and you're stuck in a traffic jam. Oh dear, not nice. At the moment, it's very much stuck in traffic and waiting in the emergency department are the two difficult ones. It seems that queuing in a shop, waiting for a bus is not difficult for most people. Waiting for results of job interviews or exams is getting higher and higher. I'm not surprised as lots of you may be taking your exams. Taido Lim, thank you so much for your comment and recommendations. Waiting for delivering a baby. That's interesting. So let's see. Waiting for the right partner. Interestingly, 12%. That's quite a lot. That's more than I expected. <laughs> right. Nerd guy, what's the difference between wait and await? Await is used much less, much less commonly. One difference is a wait doesn't take four. So I wait for your reply. I will await your reply. But the meanings. Okay, wow, the music's finished, which means let's have a look then at the final result of what you've all said. It seems like the emergency department in the hospital, right, is the most difficult here. In second place, Waiting for the result of a job or an interview or an exam. That doesn't surprise me because so many of you will be doing the IELTS test, waiting for the result, uh, waiting for the exam. And maybe a lot of you actually will then be looking for jobs. So that also makes sense. Um, and then being stuck in traffic. Yeah, nightmare. Waiting for the right partner. That's interesting. So many of you, 11% are waiting for the right partner. You're young people, aren't you? Of course you are. Well, listen, don't rush. Take your time. Find the right person. Find somebody with the same values as you. Not the same opinion. Doesn't matter too much. Um, in fact, it's good. You can be chalk and cheese. You can be very different. But make sure you've got the same values, similar beliefs. Um, <laughs> Keith's advice for marriage in the future. There you go. Um, excellent. Good. 
we've talked a lot about different waiting situations, okay? Let me move on. Um, I wonder generally if you're good at waiting and if you're a patient person. Actually, I have a Facebook page and you probably know this. There's a Facebook group and a Facebook page, right? Um, the Facebook, have I got the information? I don't know if I have Facebook page. Facebook page is at Keith Speaking Academy. Um, and there's a Facebook group called the Keith's Mastermind Community for IELTS Speaking. If you want to join that, you can. Obviously, it's it's free. Um, but I asked people on the Facebook page yesterday, last week, are you a patient person? And I wanted to find out, first of all, if you're patient. Secondly, uh, what language you use to describe yourself as a patient person. Let's see what some of you said. Let's have a look together at your ideas. Person. Well, let's see what you said. Um, Eva said, yes, I am. And then she talks about idioms. And we say patience brings the roses. So that's in your language. It means only with patience and persistence will achieve the goals. Right. In English, we would say um, all good all good things come to he who waits. Yeah. We also have, if someone is patient, we say they have the patience of Job. Job was a character from the Bible. Um, Nabaraj says, my patience will push the limits when it comes to waiting in a line. Right. Yes. We would say, my patience will be pushed to the limits. But lovely expression, Nabaraj. Nice. Very nice. Razel talks about Whereas I have a body coming various diseases, it, to, it, it is common. He's talking about being a patient, like when you're sick, which is a different meaning, but that's great to see that comment. Um, Abdi Fatah says, yes and no, it depends on the situation. Uh, uh, Eve Deka says, please discuss this. I will, absolutely. Um, AK Chana says, yes, I'm, yes, I'm. You mean, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Glia, <laughs> Gias. Yes, yes, yes. Depends on the situation. Um, Hattis also says, depends on what I face. If I have to complete something like an assignment or chores, I can never be patient. But if I have to wait for some news, I'm always patient. However, I can be a little excited. Lovely answer. Um, not really, but depending on the situation, I may try, says Rosalyn. Uh, Dina says, if we are patient, we will get the best. Exactly. Uh, Amoanima, Amo yes, I am. I'm a very laid back person. I like things to take on its course. Ah, we would say, I like things to run their course unless I'm hungry and then you're not patient. I'm the same. I get very grumpy if I'm hungry. <laughs> Luis says, I was never patient. So many different answers. Um, Doina says, no, I usually have ants in my pants, which means you get all fidgety and edgy and you need to move around. Great comments. Thanks for those guys. Very, very interesting. Listen, go and check out the Facebook page. Um, it's really interesting. Thank you for sharing all of your comments and your answers. Um, I try to answer some people. I can't answer everybody. So yes, um, it's, I guess, is the quantity, but it's really nice to see what you're saying. So please um, carry on commenting. It's great. There are a few comments from you here. Um, Nigin said, I don't see myself as a patient person. Very nice. Very, very nice. Um, in which country do you live? I live in Spain, sir. Um, we've got virus. Virosov, I'm impatient like many people. Great. The good things come to those who wait. Negin, that's a great expression. Good things come to those who wait. I'm going to look at these idioms a bit later. <clears throat> um, Daniela says, I rarely run out of patience, but sometimes I become crazy. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. OK, good. Olivia says, yes, I always patient with my students. Remember, patient is an adjective. So just be careful, Olivia and everybody. It's I am always patient, right? To be patient. Excellent. Good. But look, I can't suffer fools gladly. That's interesting. I 
can't suffer fools gladly. I'm going to make a note of that for you. Um, that means that you don't tolerate stupid people. Um, so if you want things done well, you want th things done efficiently, then you do not accept or tolerate stupid people, slow people, inefficient people. I can't or I don't. I don't suffer fools gladly, right? I don't like working with stupid, slow, inefficient people. Okay, great. Um, this is a good point. Teachers have a holy patience. A holy patience? I'm not sure what you mean by holy. Holy patience? Holy patience? A lot of patience, right? That kind of thing. Yes. Um, Celine says the doctor was very patient for his patient. Very nice. Very nice. Very patient for his patient. Lovely. Lovely. Very, very nice. The two, the two different meanings, right? So just to recap some of the things that came up um, there, we had um, my patience was pushed to the limits, somebody said. That means I... Oh, I almost lost my patience, right? I was at the limit of losing. I almost lost my patience. I have ants in my fan. I have ants in my pants. Means I get fidgety. Do you remember fidgety? I get fidgety. Um, I don't suffer fools gladly. I don't accept or tolerate. Uh, stupid people it means you don't you don't like to work with them usually this is very much used in a, in a work context right okay we're gonna look at some more idioms a bit later right um, but are you good at waiting and patience great let's move on because so far we've looked at situations where you have to wait I'm gonna move on next and leave Alice in her wonderland Let's move on and talk about the listening task. So the listening task I'm going to do with you is a model answer. Um, it's a model answer really taken from a part two question about patience. Um, and there are different questions you could be asked. You might be asked, describe a time when you had to wait for somebody. Um, describe a time when you lost your patience. Um, describe a time when you decided to wait for somebody or something. There are different possibilities. Um, I'm going to talk about a time that I lost my patience, but I decided to wait. So first of all, with this task, um, what I'm going to do is show you over here some questions, right? If I can get them all on the screen, that will help listening task. So I want you to listen. Let me take that off, make it clearer. Listen to someone talk about a time they lost their patience. Okay, there you go. Um, try to fill in these gaps with one word, right? Just one word. As with all listening, it's a good idea to have a look first, read the question and guess the word. If you can't guess the word, at least guess, is it a noun, a verb, or an adjective? Trolleys, blank, full of stuff. Could be a verb. Trolleys are. Could be an adjective. Number two, so I decided to, probably a verb, right? Two plus a verb. Number three, I was getting probably an adjective. I was getting lazy. I was getting tired. Number four, in this case, my patience was probably a verb, right? To be something, probably a verb. Number five, that was the blank straw, describing a straw, probably an adjective, okay? So this activity of deciding noun, verb, adjective, adverb, preposition, it's a good way to start your listening, okay? Right. <laughs> Olivia, 
I, I so, so empathize with you. Olivia says, my patience was pushed to the limits when I taught the same lesson over and over again, but they still don't remember it. Oh, yes, that's every teacher's um, situation. The trouble is, of course, Olivia, is that teaching doesn't equal learning. Sometimes as teachers, we think, if I've taught it, they've learned it. And of course, it's not the same. Teaching is not the same as learning. Um, so interesting, but I totally, I totally uh, empathise with you. OK, so we're going to listen. If you're ready, just give me a thumbs up so I know that you're ready. Just give me a little thumbs up and then I can see that you are ready to listen and we'll listen. And I want you to try and fill in the gaps. OK. Some of you are having a guess. Oh, Stan the man. Oh, I forgot about Stan the man. I should bring him back. OK, good. Thumbs up from Mina. Deep thee. That's great. From Queen Doline. Excellent. Good. I think we're ready to go. Martin, thank you very much. Hien Tran also. OK, guys. So if you're ready, let's listen. Here we go. If I can find it, here we go. So I remember this one time when I was um, shopping in a supermarket and I was waiting in a queue to pay. And I just had a few items in my basket and everybody in front of me had full trolleys, right? Trolleys crammed full of stuff. So I was thinking actually about changing queue um, because just to speed things up. But then I thought, well, knowing Sod's law, if I change Q, this one will suddenly speed up. So I decided to stick it out and wait. And the Q was moving slowly. And I noticed the cashier was talking to everybody, to every customer. She was telling her life story to any Tom, Dick and Harry. And I was getting fidgety, right? I was getting quite nervous. I was just thinking, come on, get a move on. We don't have all day. Um, and I tried to calm down. You know, normally I'm quite a laid back person. But in this case, my patience was wearing thin um, because I was in a rush to get back home for, for dinner. And then eventually it came to my turn. And would you believe it? She closed the till. That was the final straw. I was so angry. Um, I lost my patience. I just left my trolley and the food there and stormed out never to return. I never went back to that supermarket. I was so disappointed with the service. <laughs> Great story. Oh, what a supermarket. Would you go back? Absolutely not. That is quite annoying, right? Listen, I can see some of your answers coming in. Um, let's have a quick look at what you've got. I will put up the list again. And then I'll put some of your answers up. Let me just see then. I'll put a bit of classical music just as we share some of your answers. Interesting. I like how you put them all together. Make me think. Nice. IELTS 8. I can see why you're an IELTS 8. Hattie's crabbed. Almost. Hanan. Nice to see you here. Right, you're almost there, absolutely almost. Love life, waiting for you. <laughs> Ahmed says, sad story. Akurairu, interesting wearing, nice, excellent. Nice, 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 good. What else have we got? 
crumped interesting crumped stick fishy very ah very no right very okay interesting a lot of you said very okay almost mohammed four out of five four out of five and almost four out of five yeah too too long excellent so listen trolleys um i'm just going to go down and show you the answers because i've got them down here <clears throat> Trolleys crammed, right? Not cramped. Um, if you say that we, it was very, yeah, it's it's similar. Cramped, cramped is um, the bus was cramped, or we were cramped inside the bus. It means there's no space. But when you talk about the 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 box or the bus is crammed full, is to be stuffed full of stuff. So crammed here means stuffed. It's different from cramped. So to be cramped um, means that there's no space. It was cramped, there's no space. This means it was stuffed full of something, stuffed. So it's very similar, I get it. It's very, very similar, but not quite the same. I decided to stick it out, right, to, to continue until it finished, to continue to the end and wait. I was getting fidgety, we talked about, getting all nervous and fidgety, um, not pacing up and down, otherwise I'd lose my place in the queue. <clears throat> in this case, my patience was not very thin. That was a really good guess. A few people said very. It was actually wearing thin. My patience was wearing thin. Bit like my hair. Number five, that was the final straw, right? Um, the final straw, that was the final straw. The final straw that broke the camel's back was that was the, the the last thing that made me break or made me get angry, right? So really, that's a common idiom, right? That was the final straw. So that's the final action that broke me, if you like, or made me really angry. Angry. The straw that broke the camel's back is the same expression. That was the final straw. You can imagine, you probably have a similar expression in your language. Um, whether the camel, if you imagine the camel, um, the camel, right, with the hump, and you're sitting on the camel, but normally the camel you put maybe um, straw or hay on top of the camel, and if you put too much, one final piece of straw, the camel breaks and falls falls down, falls over. It's quite a funny image, right? But the straw that broke the camel's back, we also say more commonly in speaking, we say that is the final straw. Um, this kind of idiom is a bit more formal, if you like. Um, it's fine, but I think spoken English, we tend to say that was the final straw or that is the final straw. Okay, so listen, excellent, well done. All of you did really, really well. Got some great answers there. Okay, brilliant. You've also got the Arabic proverb, right? I'm, I'm sure it exists in many, many languages. Absolutely sure. Um, right, okay. Sorry, I got distracted. I just heard the Amazon man arrived. But it's all right, my wife is there. I've been waiting for him all day. <laughs> Romelia, you talk about, yes, crammed is about the subject. Yes, I cram something into a space. Um, cramped is about the object. Exactly, yeah, you're spot on. Great. Okay, so that was the listing. What I want you to do now, actually, um, is I'd like you to listen again and pick out some useful phrases, okay? So I want you to do the same, listen again, and pick out 
useful phrases or and collocations. Okay, there are lots of collocations in that. Um, so I'd like you to go through, we're going to play it one more time. I want you to, <laughs> what? I want you to listen again um, and pick out any useful phrases or collocations that you hear. Collocations are two or three words that usually go together, right? Have a shower, it's a collocation, right? Um, drink white wine or red wine. Red wine is a collocation, right? Um, <clears throat> so listen again and pick out useful phrases. What I'm going to do is put the subtitles up this time that will help you check your listening and just write down, as you listen, write down the phrases, okay? Just give me a thumbs up if you're ready to listen. Yeah, good. I've just seen Ertu Grul. It's the final drop which caused the overflow of the glass in my language, yes. I think in French and Spanish they have the same thing. Excellent. Lots of thumbs up. Let's go straight in and let's start listening. Here we go. So I remember this one time when I was um, shopping in a supermarket and I was waiting in a queue to pay and I just had a few items in my basket and everybody in front of me had full trolleys, right? Trolleys crammed full of stuff. So I was thinking actually about changing queue um, because just to speed things up. But then I thought, well, knowing Sod's law, if I change Q, this one will suddenly speed up. So I decided to stick it out and wait. And the Q was moving slowly. And I noticed the cashier was talking to everybody, to every customer. She was telling her life story to any Tom, Dick and Harry. And I was getting fidgety, right? I was getting quite nervous. I was just thinking, come on, get a move on. We don't have all day. Um, and I tried to calm down. You know, normally I'm quite a laid back person, but in this case, my patience was wearing thin um, because I was in a rush to get back home for, for dinner. And then eventually it came to my turn. And would you believe it? She closed the till. That was the final straw. I was so angry. Um, I lost my patience. I just left my trolley and the food there and stormed out never to return. I never went back to that supermarket. I was so disappointed with the service. Right, okay, good. So let's have a look, some of the things that you've put. Um, Julia, nice to see you. In a queue, speed things up, great. Queue to pay, lovely, good. Um, this one time, nice, right? A good way to start your answer, right? There was this one time, great. Uh, to change queue, where is that? Seth, changing queue or change queue is great. Yep, nice. Um, Seth as well, I was getting fidgety. Quite nervous, lovely. Adverb, adjective, quite nervous. Dipthi, get a move on. Come on, quickly, get a move on. Alex, uh, <laughs> a live story. Almost, right? The expression was to tell your life story. To tell your life story. A different expression was any Tom, Dick and Harry. Uh, let's see if somebody else got that. We've got um, laid back. Uh, in a rush, Jagmeet to calm down. Um, oh, we're almost there. Let's see, any others? Stick it out. Stormed out. Uh, full of, in a queue. Came to my turn, that's nice. Yep, hover also. Just to speed up, it was getting nervous. Try to calm down in a rush for something. Great, lovely. Zarina also stormed out. You picked up wearing thin. Excellent. 
to see any others. I'm going to move on because that's great. We've got so many come in. Get to move on from Hart Allen. Nice. So let me just share with you, right? These are some useful phrases and collocations. I've put in bold maybe the useful ones, right? So I remember this one time. That's a really nice way to start a, a description of an event, right? I remember several years ago, or I remember this one time, this one time, talking about the past, but lovely natural English. I was shopping. I was waiting in a queue, right? Waiting in a queue to pay. That's also nice. Uh, a few items if you're shopping Thinking about the basket, I have a few things or a few items. Full trolleys. Trolleys crammed full of stuff, right? So I cram the trolley full of something, yeah? I cram my bag full of papers. As, as uh, Romelia said, I'm the subject. I cram something with something. I was thinking about changing queue, right? So you can change queue just to speed things up, so to speed up to go faster. But then I thought, well, knowing Sod's Law, now, I don't know if you know Sod's Law, but Sod's Law is if something can go wrong, it will, basically, right? If something can go wrong, it will. And this is the same as what I think the Americans call Murphy's Law. In England, we tend to use um, Sod's Law. I think in America, they say Murphy's Law. Here in Spain, they talk about La Ley de Murphy, <laughs> Murphy's Law. Uh, so Sod's Law, of course. So that means if my queue is stuck, if I change... This queue will speed up and the new queue will get stuck. It's Sod's law, right? If it can go wrong, it will go wrong for sure. Always happens. So, yes. Uh, why is it called Murphy's law, says Maria? I don't know the origin of that. Um, that's one to look up. We can check later. So if I change Q, this one will suddenly speed up. So I decided to stick it out, right? So to wait until the end, to stick it out. The queue was moving slowly. I noticed the cashier was talking to everybody. She was telling her life story. So to tell your life story is to talk a lot, really. It's, it's not literally your life story. It just means to talk a lot. To talk a lot about yourself. Right. Have you noticed that? That sometimes happens, right? When you're in a queue and suddenly the person next to you is like talking to you like you're their best friend. Oh, I've been waiting for 20 minutes. You know, I've got to go. I've got to get my shopping done. I'm having chicken for dinner tonight. My, my, uh, my brother is coming over for dinner. I love chicken. It's like, I don't care. Who are you? Who, why are you telling me? Right. I don't even know you. And that person is telling their life story. It means that they are talking a lot about themselves. They're telling their life story. So any Tom, Dick and Harry, any Tom, Dick and Harry means anybody. A person you don't know. Anybody, right? That's another funny expression, right? Any Tom, Dick and Harry. Anybody. Even people, especially people you don't know. Don't know any Tom, Dick and Harry, yeah? So as we talked about waiting for the right partner, if you're rate waiting for the right partner, don't get married to any Tom, Dick and Harry. Choose the right person, <laughs> right? <laughs> I was getting fidgety, right? that we talked about that moving your hands, getting nervous. I was quite nervous. Somebody pointed out, nice collocation. Come on, get a move on. So get a move on means hurry up. Colloquial English, get a move on, hurry up. Um, it's quite strong. 
but it's good. We don't have all day, another expression. Calm down to relax. Um, normally, I'm a laid back person, so laid back is very calm and relaxed. Right, patient, maybe you could also say. Um, but my patience was wearing thin. I'm losing my patience, right? We've, as we said before, I was losing, or let's say I was becoming impatient. That might be a better way of explaining it. I was becoming impatient because I was in a rush, in a hurry to get back home. It came to my turn. That's actually quite good. If you're talking about waiting in queues, it came to my turn. It was my turn. She closed the till. That was the final straw. I lost my patience. Um, I stormed out. So that means I left angrily. I left angrily. I stormed out. Never to return. Boom. I never went back. I was so disappointed with, disappointed with something. That's it, right? That was the, um, the model answer. Lots of useful um, phrases. Um, right. <laughs> Kay Yohani says, I thought they were a person. Well, <laughs> kind of. Uh, Ladla, you're asking, can we get the PDF you use at the time of teaching? Yes, absolutely. Yes, you will get the PDF. So, um, so in about three or four hours, because what I do is I, I edit this, I change it, I put it into a PDF, I upload on the website. So later you will get it, excuse me, later I'll put it on the, on the website over here. It comes under the free live lessons. So yes, the answer is later. You'll be able to get it off the website. Just give me a few hours. I need some time to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Sana says, never storm out, whatever happened. I know, it's always a bad idea to storm out. But sometimes when you lose your patience, <laughs> you do things you maybe regret. Okay, that was it. Um, I'm going to move on. What am I going to do next? I'm going to move on. We've still got some time. These hours normally take an hour and a half. These hours take an hour and a half. No, Keith, these lessons take an hour and a half. We've done a listening task. That was a model answer. Interesting, right? That model answer, if you go back and watch it, it takes 1 minute 30 seconds. In the past, some students have asked, but Keith, 1 minute 30, is that enough? Or do you need to speak for two, hour, for two hours, for two minutes? One minute 30 is enough. Because if you finish at one minute 30, the examiner will ask you a follow-up question and you give a short answer and that's fine. My advice is talk for a minimum of one minute 30. Minimum one minute 30. And maximum two minutes. If you go over two minutes, it's okay. The examiner will just cut in and interrupt you. But try minimum one minute 30. And that's fine. Okay, good. Great. Um, what's after the listening task? We are going to look at some idioms like at the end of your tether. What does that mean? At the end of your tether. Does anybody know this idiom? Interesting. Let's find out. Let's have a look at some more idioms that might be useful to help you talk about this topic. OK. Here we go. Tilina, nice to hear from you. I got 8.5 for speaking. Thanks to you and me. Thanks to you and me. I love it. Nice. Well done. Congratulations. Let me give you a round of applause. That's great. So pleased for you. That's great. Lovely. OK, um, great. Thanks, Upsara and Burns, for posting the uh, the links there for people. Uh, Nor's World, is there any discount for the IELTS Gold course on Christmas? No, I'm not having a sale on Christmas. I'm so sorry. I'm taking a holiday over Christmas, so there's not much action, action there. 
But listen, let's move on to idioms, right? Um, to be at the end of your tether. This is the same as um, to run out of patience, right? It is to have no patience left or to run out of patience. If you imagine you have a rope or a string and you're at the end of your string, you're going to fall off, right? The tether is like a, a rope or a string, right? You're hanging here, wah, you fall. You're at the end of the tether, you run out of patience. For example, I've asked my daughter to clean her room three times this morning and she still hasn't done it. I'm at the end of my tether. <laughs> I'm out of patience, right? That's it, to be at the end of your tether. Good. Um, Sana, thank you for your wishes. My patience is wearing thin. We looked at this, right? We saw this earlier. It means I'm becoming less and less patient or more and more impatient. For example, I've asked you so many times to do this and now my patience is wearing thin. This is like, especially, I mean, dads, mums and dads are good at this. When they're getting, they're, they're about to explode and get angry, this is the phrase we use, right? When you're saying, I've been patient, I'm waiting, but now I'm about to explode. My patience is wearing thin. That's the expression you use before you explode. And then the children know. They go, oh no, oh no, patience wearing thin. Oh dear, this is serious. He's about to explode. <laughs> right? That's the one. My patience is wearing thin. A similar expression, if you like, is to lose it, right? Um, so to lose your patience and and your temper, right? It's to get angry. To lose it is to lose your temper, but we, we use it for patience as well. For example, I'm gonna lose it. I'm going to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose it if I have to repeat my order to the waitress again. Does that ever happen? You give the waitress the order and the waitress forgets and she comes back in five minutes and goes, oh, I'm sorry, did you ask for the chicken or the fish? The chicken. No, the chicken. Yes, good. And then she comes back five minutes later. I'm sorry, was it chicken with the mushrooms or without the mushrooms? I'm going to lose it if I have to repeat my order to the waitress again. Okay, similar expression, to lose it. Now, this is a biblical expression, but we use this a lot in speaking. Um, to have the patience of Job. It's pronounced Job not Job. It's got a capital J, right? Job is a character from the Bible. Um, the Bible is the Christian religious book. Um, and Job is the person who was very, very patient, right? He waited and waited. He was very patient. So we say to have the patience of Job. If you want to describe a patient person, you can say you have the patience of of Job. For example, you need to have the patience of Job when waiting your turn in a government office, right? Government office is notorious for being slow and bureaucratic, red tape. So you need to have the patience of Job. Notice it's patience, the patience right? C-E, the noun, the patience of Job. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> Agarim, has this live podcast finished? Um, it, it's, it's still going, is the answer. We've been going for an hour and a half, and <laughs> it's still going. Uh, Joaquin, I'm about to lose my cool. Yes, that's exactly the same expression. Well done. I'm about to lose my cool. Hold your horses means, yeah, means wait. Hold your horses. Wait. Very good. I like that. Uh, Selena's also got Rome wasn't built in a day. I'm going to come to that because we've got some proverbs, right? Um, and I'll share these proverbs. 
Proverbs and idioms are not quite the same. Idioms are used a lot in spoken English. Proverbs are not used that much, to be honest, but they can be used. A watched pot never boils. So a pot is like a pan for cooking. You put water in the pan and you heat it up. You wait for the water to boil. If you watch the pan, it never boils, right? When you walk away, it boils. It means waiting for something eagerly takes a long time. It seems to take a long time. A watched pot never boils. Rome wasn't built in a day. Be patient, my friend, as you said. It means all things take time to do. And good things come to he who waits or they who wait. Good things come to... Traditionally, we used he, right? As in most um, proverbs, it's about men. But you can be. it can be for women. You could say good things come to she who waits. Good, good things come to they who wait. Good thing comes to he who waits. If you wait patiently, you will be rewarded. I think in many languages, I notice people have the same expression, right? There's one about the roses that ever said. <clears throat> right, excellent, good. Rome wasn't built in a day. Hold your horses. I'm going to add that up here. Hold your horses. Be patient. So hold your horses. Um, I'll add that. I'll edit it later. So hold your horses. Well, in fact, we, we only use it in the, the imperative, right? Hold your horses just means wait. But it, it tends to be only used in the imperative. Hold your horses. Wait. Nice. Good. OK. Lots and lots of... <laughs> I keep doing that. Lots of idioms there. We've got at the end of your tether. My patience is wearing thin. To lose it. To lose your cool. To have the patience of Job. Hold your horses. And then we've got these proverbs. OK, excellent. Guys, we are coming to the end, but we're not quite there because I'm going to finish up with Kahoot. Kahoot is a game where I'm going to test you with four questions. It takes about 10 minutes to see if you remember the language that we've learned. In order to play this game with me, all you need to do is to go to kahoot.it, right? It's another website. So stay here to see the question. But on maybe on your phone or on another tab, um, go to www.kahoot.it and write your name and the pin, right? Your next question is, Keith, what's the pin? I'm, I've got you. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold your horses. Here we go. Let me find my library patience. And let's start. Classic mode. Get ready to join. So, guys, we're over here. Get ready to join. Um, it, so you need to go to kahoot.it and the pin. You put in your name and the pin 76295. Maybe Burns and Apsara, could you put this into the chat as well so people can see the pin? There you go, 79265, okay? We've got a very Christmassy theme today. For those of you celebrating Christmas, listen, I hope you have a fantastic time. I'm, I'm looking forward to Christmas. Actually, this week, I'm flying back to the UK. I'm going back to Manchester um, to spend Christmas with my dad, my brother and my sister and all of their family um, and families and to, yeah, to have a few days in England, have a Christmas in England, an England Christmas, maybe, something like that. Listen, Kahoot, we've got lots of people in. I'll just give you a few more moments to get in and to join. Don't worry if you can't join. Um, 
you can put your answer in the in the thingy in the chat if you want okay as we're just waiting uh, hanan says what's the difference between proverbs and idioms so proverbs are um are kind of very old sayings that normally something is true right like every cloud has a silver lining they're about things that are always true and they're very old idioms are much more they're not always true they're just where a phrase doesn't have a literal meaning it has a different meaning right so idioms are much more common it's a good thing great be patient and you'll bear fruit in the end lovely martin ma do you know who i am i'm not sure well i know you're martin but i'm not sure what else have we got? Great. Thanks for sharing. So um, the pins are up there. I'll just give you a minute to join. What about phrase and collocation? So collocations are two or three words that normally go together. A phrase can be longer, basically. A phrase can be um, a much longer expression. Right, let's get into Kahoot. Let's start playing. I think we've got everybody in there. Let me just take the Kahoot away. How many people have we got? We've got, it doesn't say. Okay, that's good. Let's play. Let's get in there. First question. Here we go. Patience. I hate it when people blank the queue. Enter, line, jump, interrupt. I hate it when people blank the queue. Enter, line, jump or interrupt. You've got 30 seconds. Mim fam, bravery, bravery wearing, wearing thin. I don't think so. Not really. Look at that. We got 53 people said to jump the queue, which was the right answer. Well done. I hate it when people jump the queue. Of course, you can say enter the queue, but enter the queue means that they join the queue, which is the correct thing. Here's the people. You join the queue. Jump is when you go in, right? Enter is a good thing. So you don't get annoyed when people enter the queue. That's good. You get annoyed when people jump the queue. Well done. Let's see who was the fastest. Jemmy, you were top there. Franco was second. Romelia was third. And we've got Semgmin and Zarina coming up next. Let's go to question number two. Please hurry up. I'm running blank of patience away out up down please hurry up i'm running blank of patience away out up or down remember you can put the answer in the yeah well done in the box anwar well done mina well done quindaline nice good nikita well done ramesh well done muslim girl well done 80 of you got it absolutely right to so run out of patience. I'm running out of patience. Brilliant. Well done. Very, very nice. Um, let's see how we're doing. Oh, things have moved. Franco has moved up to first place. Jemmy has dropped into second. Job, Job's patience. Lovely. In third place, Romelia has dropped as well. But there's still two questions to go. Question number three. I've told you three times already. Now I'm at the end of my line, belt, cue, or tether. I've told you three times already. Now I'm at the end of my blank, line, belt, cue, or tether. MD, well done. Innocentia, well done. Atavi, nice, well done. Mina, good. 
Kahiana KP, well done. Varun, well done. Look at that. 81 people got it tether at the end of my tether, right? Meaning you are absolutely, totally out of patience and about to explode. I'm at the end of my tether. Excellent. Good. Let's see where the scores are. Oh, Jemmy has pushed back up. Job's patience. His patience is paying off because he's now moved into second. Franco, Romilia, Sengmin, you have it all to do. Abid, you're the highest climber. I've seen highest climber come good at the very end. Let's do the very, very final question. Question number four. Ready? Hands on the buzzer. Here we go. <laughs> She is so calm waiting. She has the patience of John, Jacob, Job, Joshua. <laughs> she is so calm waiting. She has the patience of John, Jacob, Job, Joshua. <laughs> They're all from the Bible. Which one is it? Well done, MD. Zach, well done. Lara, well done. Belied, nice. Jona, very good. 73 got Job, well done. Oh, quite a few went for Jacob. Jacob? No, it's not Jacob. It's Job, right? Whether you are a man or a woman doesn't matter. You can still have the patience of Job. That was the very calm, patient person in the Bible. Okay, let's move on to the podium. Third place. <coughs> Who's that? Franco. Well done. Job's patience was second and in first. Jemmy. Well done indeed. You made it to the top. Well done, Jemmy. Whoever you are, congratulations. <laughs> very, very, very nice. That was great. Lovely. So a big round of applause to Jemmy. Great to see you winning the uh, Kahoot. It means you've been paying attention and you're fast on the buzzer. Excellent. So listen, guys, just to remind you, um, if you want to get the PDF, so we've been looking at all of these information over here. In a few hours, right, I will put this on the website. It is the Keith Speaking Academy. And the website looks, well, looks like this, right? Um, if you go to the free live lessons, you'll be able to get that there. You can download the PDF. Um, if you're interested, you can download my ebook, Common Mistakes in IELTS Speaking. You just need to put your name here and your email and you can download it directly. I also have, actually, I have another... Um, PDF for you. I'm going to ask Upsara and Burns to share the link. It's the link for the speaking confident one, right? So this PDF is over here, a fairly new one I have, how to speak confidently in IELTS speaking. Um, if you click on the link that Burns and Upsara have just put in, um, then you'll be able to get that. So that was the link. It's there. I've put it on the uh, Sorry, let me just change that round. Da, 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 da. Get Keith's free ebook, How to Speak Confidently. So if you've, and I see Burns has put it in YouTube as well. Just click on those links. Thank you, both of you. That's great. Um, and you'll be able to get this. It's the How to Speak English Confidently. It's a very short PDF and it just goes through um, different ideas. There are some listening audios you can do, some ideas about how you can build your confidence when you're speaking English, right? And preparing for the IELTS test. So go and click on the links, just put in your email and you can get that as well, how to speak confidently in speaking in IELTS speaking. And I hope it will help you on your journey to success. Okay, excellent, good. Just to recap what we've done today, we've been looking at the topic of waiting and patience. Um, we have looked at lots of vocabulary, right? To run out of patience, to lose patience, 
to be impatient. Lots of different expressions. We've looked at situations where you have to wait at the doctors, at the airport, waiting for Mr. Wright or Mrs. Wright. And which are the most difficult for you, right? I think it was the emergency ward. The listening task, we've done a model answer where you've listened and identified useful phrases from that model answer. And we've been looking at different idioms and proverbs that can help you with your speaking on this topic and Kahoot to see who has been the winner. So listen, well done. Somebody just asked me about the next class. I think it was Jitma. When is the next live lesson? The next live lesson, it's the first Thursday of every month. So it's going to be the 5th of January. The 5th of January. Gosh, that's the rate. That's the King's Day. But yes, the 5th of January will be the next one, right? So just remember, basically, um, if I can put it up here. Do I have it up here? It's the first Thursday of each month. Live lessons on YouTube and Facebook. Um, if you join the gold course, which is my online course, you get extra live lessons on the second Thursday and the third Thursday of each month, where we look at all the most common questions, new questions on IELTS speaking and different language you need. Um, similar to this live lesson, but even better. And that is inside the gold course. If you're interested, just go to the to my website, the Key Speaking Academy, and you can find the information about the Gold Course. It's it's up there. If you click on here, top corner, online courses, you'll be able to find down there the Gold Course. There it is. You can click on it and find all about that particular course. Okay. Lovely. It's coming to the end. I'd like to wish you all um, a very happy Christmas. By the way, if you're on YouTube, do subscribe, turn on notifications. We've always got that. I want to thank you all for joining me today. Um, it's been great fun and I hope you've enjoyed the class and learnt lots. And if you're taking your test in the coming weeks, fingers crossed, touch wood, best of luck. I hope it goes really well. And um, if you're celebrating Christmas, happy Christmas, happy new year. Let's stay in touch and I look forward to seeing you. That's it. I'm going to say goodbye for now. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody. Let's go out with a bit of, a little bit of music. I you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you've never said you felt that way. Cause you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away. But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey As you fade away As you fade away Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Got a build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way I can see the way you look at me, I'm such a disgrace I never really asked to be brought into this place You wanna love me? Well then baby, have a taste All the highs and the lows no, you'll never be the same I don't really want to hurt you But I can't control the pain If you're sticking by my side Maybe we could be okay Okay, okay Maybe you could be the change I need today I promise that I've never felt this way I really hope that you Will choose to stay Through all the pain I know you told your friend You're not okay And tell me what's wrong And why you never said You felt that way Try to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away. But I've known you too long. It hurts to watch. Thank you. Take care. Happy New Year. All the best. Bye bye.